Boy, I've said this before, I'll say it again. People that complain about working on predictors, I think maybe they just don't have experience on working on other brands from a similar era because it's no treat. <laughs> I've worked on GEs, Admirals, RCAs that use these circuit boards, and they're all a major pain to work on. Uh, so, another few fun, fun points. So, uh, generally these wires, so unlike a predictor where they're wire wrapped, these are twisted and then soldered on, so I need to heat these up and then pull the wires off. A lot of the wires are the same color, white, 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 so uh, I gotta do something. Take reference photos, trace out the wiring. Uh, for example, I know this is a filament wire because I can trace it back here and it goes to the power transformer right to a heavy green wire. Uh, some other odd things to so this. Got a wire and a resistor going into a hole in the circuit board. And there's a tube on the other side. And they cut a hole in the circuit board. So what the heck is that? That is part of the vertical output circuit. Uh, there we go. So that is pin 9 of the 6S4A vertical multivibrator and vertical output tube. So if I trace it around, that goes that there's a 220k resistor and the other eventually goes to a wire on the vertical uh, output transformer. There can be some pretty heavy duty voltage spikes on that. That's why they say do not measure, you can fry your meter. That's why they have to decouple it through resistor, capacitor to knock down those, those feedback pulses to the circuit. But uh, they must have, I'm guessing, isolated it from the board like that for insulating purposes. Kind of curious to see how that feeds through to the socket on the other side. I don't think that's soldered to the pin on the tube. Um, and there's only seven tabs. It's a nine pin tube. So I'm guessing eight is gone or clipped off. And then nine just feeds right through a hole in the board. So <laughs> got to deal with that. Uh, some of these screws that uh, hold the board down are actually soldered to the board. So i got to unsolder that to lift the board off. Oh, that's fun. Some components are wired right from this to the board. That is that horizontal drive capacitor and this coupling cap down to this. But right, I'll get it out. It may take a little while, but I'll get it out. So, how do you get these wires off? Well, at first I heated up the lug and tried to kind of unloop the wire a little bit and pull it off, but then I realized, uh, well, accidentally, that it's actually easier to heat up the whole thing and actually pull the pin out. These wires are wrapped around pins that are then are almost like stakes that are then stuck into the board and soldered in. So, let's see if I can get all of these out. There's a shielded cable, it might be a little bit different. We'll see. And this, this, this one's not going to come out, so the wire just pulled off of that one. Uh, I'll try it over on the other side. This purple wire here. Go to this guy. There. So I just pull the whole stake out, and then I'll put it back in the hole and solder it down. There we go. It's kind of a mixed bag. I'd say about half the cases the stake came out, and about half the wire just came off. I made an effort to keep the wires in the relative position from where they came out, especially on this side where there were a bunch of connections. So I'm hoping that will aid me a bit in putting this back together. Some of these I just clipped off, like these resistors. I figured uh, that would help stress the board as little as possible, including this wire, because I have plenty of length. I'll just strip it and resolder. So I think that is everything. I have to be very careful when I take these screws out because in some places the board is actually soldered right to the chassis so it's not going to come out so easily. 
think I've got everything disconnected. So I guess there's two points where it's soldered on either side. Almost there. One final connection. Video out. It's pretty common in these sets to have a, a short a length and most direct uh, wire as possible to the video out, right to the CRT socket. So it actually comes to the top of the board and goes through down to the bottom. And that's another one I'm just going to clip off. So I've got enough wire to work with. I'll leave a little bit of the yellow insulation exposed to remind myself. That's where the wire goes. Alright, woohoo, there it is. So, given what a pain in the butt these are, why did they switch to using them? Simple mass production. Productivity. I wanted to crank these sets out as fast as possible, especially in the 50s. This TV was. Uh, booming. <laughs> That's a resistor I clipped out earlier while testing the mica caps. Now I can finally get a real good look around on this. So here's that vertical output. So yeah, the pin 8 is just gone. And uh, pin 9 just runs straight through a hole. Uh, soldered components directly to the lug on the socket. Well, I can certainly work on it at my leisure now. Curious about that vertical integrator. It looks like this, from flexing, the uh, circuit board trace is lifted off on the other side, which again makes me think it's been replaced. There's an ugly solder joint there. This looks kind of odd, too. They shove two resistor leads into one hole, and that one resistor looks like nothing else on this board. It could be a production change, maybe a part shortage issue, I'm not sure, but that's something I will definitely want to double check too. And there are some differences between the schematic and this. For example, this uh, uses uh, 12AU7, and the schematic is uh, 6CG7, so well, that was kind of odd. You can see that it used to have a 6AL5 there, now it's dual selenium. That's what I'll be replacing with some Shockey diodes. A few other points of interest on this board. Uh, that black disc ceramic capacitor, GMV.01. What does that mean? Guaranteed minimum value. Cheap and expensive bypass cap. Nothing special, nothing fancy. Could have used a paper cap, but uh, for space, for money, they're starting to use ceramics more and more, starting in the 50s. But uh, it was not a very good process, so they would not use these in a critical circuit. And then this guy. That is a vertical integrator network. Started using those more and more in the 50s too. Now every TV had one of these. It takes sync pul vertical sync pulses and combines them into uh, one big pulse. Uh, so that's what's inside that module, one side the dash line. Three resistors, three capacitors. I can build one out of discrete parts. It's a little tough to test in circuit. You can check the total resistance between pins 2 and 3, uh, but you really can't test those three internal capacitors. You can check the waveform in, the waveform out, see if it's working okay, or build one out of discrete components. There's nothing particularly special about it, it was just, they were so commonly used in so many TVs, they started uh, making them into an integrated module. And uh, there's no uh, really high voltage on it or anything, so it, you wouldn't need to use large paper caps. Uh, and it's also a fairly critical circuit, so in some earlier TVs from the 40s, they would use all mica caps. So that would definitely uh, save money and board space. So instead of using three or four of these big old caps, they would uh, just use a little ceramic module. 
I'm making pretty steady progress on the board. I just took out the vertical integrator and I wanted to check it out. It is this. Commonly referred to as a couplate. What it is is it's several components on a ceramic substrate and then encapsulated. Basically, lower production costs, commonly used in every TV made. So uh, I think that was uh, just a a little bit of a cost and time saver there, and probably for stability too. Often in uh, old sets that used discrete components, in other words, three individual resistors and three individual capacitors, they used mica. This was back then, um, ceramic caps weren't all that temperature stable, and paper caps uh, were a little too leaky for something like this. Uh, so, let's check this out. So it should be a 22k resistor and then 28200 so it's what about uh, 30, uh, 38k, 39k let's see what do we get ooh that's about 80k that uh, that's really high so either the original part has drifted really high in resistance, or this is a replacement and they didn't use the right value. Now I had suspected this might be a replacement because of the solder blob there, and I thought maybe they had clipped the original out on top and soldered this from the top, but no. It turns out that was just solder that leaked through from the bottom side of the board and pooled up. So this may very well be the original part to the set. So, what do I want to replace it with? Well. Theoretically, one could find a new old stock one on eBay or something, but it might very well be bad as well. So, I'll use discrete components. I'll use metal film resistors, which are very temperature stable. And for the capacitors, well, I could use plastic film caps, which are pretty darn stable. Or mica, even better, but when you get to larger values, they get kind of pricey, and it's a little bit overkill for this. Or I could use ceramic, but I have to use temperature stable, not the super cheap garden variety ceramic caps they tend to change in value as temperature changes C0G also known as NP0 are the most temperature stable caps if I have some handy I'll use them otherwise I'll use plastic film caps 2000 and 5000 are not standard values so I'll use 2200 and 4700 that should be plenty close enough Well, that was fun. No, uh, seriously though, yes, it is overkill, to put it mildly, but I actually do kind of enjoy working on circuit boards now and then, rather than having to dig down into a chassis. It's eh, just kind of relaxing work. Uh, there is my rebuilt vertical integrator. Not a thing of beauty, but it will do the job. And I uh, replaced Basically everything except that one mic cap, 3900 uh, picofarad. The larger value mic caps are a little hard to come by. That goes across the horizontal oscillator coil, which seems to be working just fine. So I'm inclined to think that that cap is fine. Likewise, didn't replace these two ceramic caps. They virtually never go bad. These coils, these peaking coils, um, Measured just fine continuity wise, so and that is actually a ceramic capacitor, even though it looks a little ugly, uh, or kind of like a resistor that is actually a capacitor. All right, so time to mount it back in the TV and hook everything back up.